Hey guys, it's Paul Myers, owner and lead therapist of Intentional Counseling. I'm a licensed professional counselor. We are a group practice in Frisco, Texas, and we specialize in mental health. So today, we're going to cover depression. We're going to cover symptoms of depression, uh, how to identify it, and uh, of all the disorders out there, depression is probably one of the most common. That one with anxiety, very similar, very common. Uh, a lot of times they go together. Today we're going to cover just the depression side of things. Um, and we're going to list those symptoms uh, from least intense to most intense, right? So, first thing to know about depression is it is a mental health disorder. So, it is not just a emotion. It's not just a, a sad feeling. Uh, it's more than that. It's more of a um, deeper ongoing, um, really debilitating disorder that, that is very difficult to deal with So uh, when it's severe. So when we're dealing with depression, we usually have this downward spiral. So usually you start feeling bad and then you know, the worse you feel, the less you do. The less you do, the worse you feel. And you just kind of spiral downward. This is progression, okay? Now, the symptoms, the first symptom is usually a decrease in energy levels. Um, so, you know, you feel lethargic, you're not really feeling um, yourself, you don't really have your normal energy level, you don't um, feel um, motivated or, or confident, you're just kind of lethargic and fatigued for no reason. Uh, second symptom is a decrease in motivation, right? You're just not motivated anymore. Um, motivation, there we go. Um, so you're not motivated anymore, you're just blase, um, just you want to sleep in bed, you want to stay in bed all day, you don't really feel like doing anything, uh, there's no drive of any kind. Even if you're a normally a driven person, depression kind of takes that away, it turns you into somebody you're not, right? Uh, and the next thing, usually we'll see a decrease in pleasure. Uh, so. Pleasure, anything that produces enjoyment, anything that produces dopamine, um, you know, whether it's a, a nice meal you like, a good hobby that you like, um, exercise, or whatever it is that you enjoy, you just stop enjoying things, really. So that decrease in pleasure, things don't really do it for you anymore. You're not enjoying things like you normally would, right? Um, even things you, you know for a fact are positive for you, just feel kind of neutral, right? Uh, the next symptom would be a drastic change. Uh, it could be up or down in usually the way your sleep and your appetite habits. So, so your sleeping habits and your eating habits um, can kind of waver. So a lot of times these are inverse. So we'll see, uh, for example, um, you know, I get depressed, so my sleep will increase drastically more so than normal but my eating will decrease, my appetite will be suppressed, right? I've seen it the other way around as well, where the appetite really increases and we're eating all the time excessively and we really have a hard time sleeping. Um, one of the two are most common, right? Uh, then we have, uh, underneath that, we have social isolation. Usually when people are depressed, they intentionally isolate. You know, it's not because of COVID, it's not because of any other reason. It's just because they don't feel like seeing anybody, talking to anybody, answering the phone, or going out of the house, or they don't really don't have the energy for it. They're not motivated for it. So they just isolate, right? They don't want to be a drag to others um, and drag them down with their, their sadness and their depression, so they isolate. So that's common. Underneath that, we have, getting a little deeper here into depression, we have feelings of hopelessness, right? Um, you're feeling hopeless, like there's, what's the point? Uh, there's, there's really, um, you know, no light at the end of the tunnel. It's a very defeatist style of thinking, like, well, nothing will ever get better. Um, you know, I, if, I can't really do anything about it. This is just the way it is and this is my life, this is how I'm going to be, and kind of give up on things. Um, so that hopelessness is a crucial aspect to it. Underneath feelings of hopelessness, we're getting a little bit more severe here. Uh, we have 
uh, suicidal ideation, right? Um, suicidal ideation is common with depression. That doesn't necessarily mean that you actively want to die. Um, it's different from active suicide. Active suicide is you're more really serious about following through. Suicidal ideation just means I'm feeling so negative that I can't help but fantasize about just taking myself out of the picture and not having to feel that anymore, right? And so it's common with, with depression. Um, and uh, it's an indicator that it's a more severe depression, especially if you're experiencing this um, 50% of the time or more, right? Okay, now there's levels of suicide, okay? So there's suicidal ideation um, just alone. Then there's suicidal ideation with a plan, meaning we've identified our method of uh, self-harm, okay? Or a suicide attempt. And then there's suicidal ideation with plan, with an intent uh, to exercise that plan, to follow through with that plan. Um, it usually goes in that order. Um, a lot of people that have suicidal ideation, I would highly recommend you tell someone, you talk to somebody about it. Because a lot of the time, research says if we just tell people that people who care about us, they love us, they kind of rally to us, and we get the help that we need, and we can get better, right? Uh, a lot of suicide happens because it wasn't shared, it wasn't disclosed, and it was just kind of kept to themselves. And then they escalated and got a little bit deeper before they could get the help that they need. So um, ideally, we want to have ongoing help if you experience any depression. You know, we want to reverse the effects. But particularly, if you're experiencing that one, you're in a kind of on the fence or a danger uh, you're in that dangerous um, zone where we really want to tell someone and, and talk to people that are closest to you that will help support you. Okay? So there's that. Um, underneath all of that, at the very bottom, usually we have either a suicide attempt or self-harm uh, to some degree. There are many ways to self-harm. Um, it doesn't have to be a suicide attempt. It could be cutting or is a common one or... Um, you know, burning your skin or overdosing on medications on purpose, um, th things like that. Just being self-destructive uh, to yourself, okay? So, when we're looking at depression, we can kind of break it up, okay? So, if I'm measuring the depression uh, from 1 to 10, we can kind of see it progress. So, we have depression 1, 2, three, four to five, depending on each of those, six, seven, eight, with just ideation, nine if there's anything more in the subcategories, and 10 here. Um, usually, the further down we go, the more of these symptoms we're gonna accumulate. So, it doesn't exactly go in this order, but somewhere along those lines, generally, right? Um, it, 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 you pick up more of these symptoms as you get deeper into depression. So if I'm at depression 9, I'm probably going to have all the symptoms above it, right? Um, or if I'm at depression 3, I may just have these first three, uh, or maybe three symptoms of the ones that I listed, okay? So if we're breaking it up, we have um, mild depression here. So 1 to 3, just some basic symptoms. Uh, if you have these, you know, it's just an indicator there um, that you should probably get some help before it gets deeper. It's a lot easier to get out of a mild depression than it is to recover from a more severe depression, okay? Uh, we have the uh, cutoff here. So this would be a moderate depression, meaning we have these symptoms and the ones above it. And then down here is more severe depression, or we have really all of them, okay? So that's uh, the symptoms of depression, how to identify it, uh, whether you have it or not. If you relate to this at all, um, it's not the end of the world, um, it's really common, depression is common, so it is very treatable, it's a curative disorder, which means you can get rid of it, you don't have to have it forever. 
Uh, also, you are not your depression. Who you are when you're depressed isn't really you. It turns you into somebody you're not. So don't identify with depression as an identity or as a, a part of who you are. Um, it's mostly a disorder that alters you. Okay. Uh, if you don't have a therapist, I would highly recommend you seek counseling. It's just for people who want help and they want to be healthy and they want to improve their lives and their, their well-being and their mindset. And I'd be honored to help you if you're interested in seeking therapy. Um, I also have therapists underneath me at our practice who'd be happy to help, uh, whether that's in person or telehealth. Uh, go to www.intentional-counseling.com. And then obviously the more people we help, the better. So if you relate, maybe share some of your story or some things that you really that resonated with you at the bottom because um, maybe something that you share might help someone else and they may um, resonate with that and uh, relate with you and we can keep the conversation going. So, Okay guys, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Don't hesitate to reach out. Appreciate you stopping by. And until next time, take care.